Hey, this video is brought to you by Perfect Circuit. Perfect Circuit are a gear store in Burbank, California. They sell Eurorack gear, synths, software, all sorts of shit. I have shopped there before. It was a positive experience and they gave me a nice preamp in which to record my microphone through. So hopefully my mic audio sounds better than it usually does. And uh, yeah, if you want to buy any gear, if you're in the market to buy gear, Perfect Circuit's a great place to do it. Go to perfectcircuit.com. Uh, so this is a new workflow tip that I have discovered recently. Uh, the problem, let's start from the problem, is uh, Ableton doesn't have a bounce in place feature. So every time I want to create some sort of reverse effect, like a reverb tail that like reverses and sweeps into something else, uh, it's a pain in the ass to do. So here's an example of how I would do it uh, or how I used to do it. So let's say I have um, <clears throat> uh, something like this and I wanna put reverb on it. So I would go and get a reverb such as Valhalla Room. Uh, and then I'll check how it sounds. Okay, it sounds pretty cool. Then I would create a new channel and then I would set the input of that channel to uh, the, the channel that I wanna record. And then I would hit record and then I would uh, record on the transport. But then the problem is you get like these other things recording and you like want the entire tail of this to record. So then you have to go and like mute things and then record. Wait for that to ring out. And then you have to like, you know, turn these things back on and then you have to move this over here and then you know, chop it, reverse it, uh, and then remove the reverb and then you're done. And then you get something like this. So that is uh, kind of cool, but it is also a pain in the ass to do. It's too many steps in my opinion. And I know that solutions to this exist, such as Bounce In Place, uh, the Max for Live device. And I think that's a great device, but um, I personally just didn't gel with that device too well. It never made its way into my workflow, whereas this one has. So if you watched my sub tutorial and you went and downloaded the free Melder bundle with the spectrogram or spectrograph in it, then you already have the plugin that I'm about to talk about. The plugin I'm about to talk about is M Recorder. And I'm just gonna load up a fresh version of this just so you can be aware of the entire process. <clears throat> so let's put M Recorder before all of our mastering plugins. Note that if you put it after your mastering plugins, every time you do a render, it's gonna render with those mastering plugins on and you don't want that usually. Uh, okay, so you open it, there's a record button, a pause button, a couple of options. <clears throat> um, but the, the two that we're mainly interested in is path and file name. So the top one, path, we need to set to a path. So usually what I do when I start a new project is I right click over here under places where it says current project. I say show in Explorer, and then I create a folder in here. I already have one here. So I'm just gonna create another called um, SVS, which is the name of the project. And then I'm just gonna call it M Recorder one. So now we have a path that we're going to record into. So let's go to my desktop, go into that project folder and click that path. So now M Recorder is like, all right, I know where to put stuff. And now we have to name it something. So let's call it um, SVS name 111 or something, just whatever you want. Uh, and now let's try and do the same thing that we just did, but with M Recorder. So instead of having to mute anything or you know, do any crazy shit with creating channels or anything like that, we can simply go to the master, turn on a reverb, which is already on the master. I just have one all, always on there now. Um, so I can just quickly turn it on and do bounces like this. Uh, I'm just gonna solo the channel I want. And then I am going to hold my control key and hit space. And what that does is it only plays back the highlighted area on the grid. So rather than like continuing to play, it's just gonna play that little bit such as this, like this. <clears throat> and you might be thinking, yeah, but how are you gonna record that? Cause the transport has stopped. You need the transport to keep going for it to keep recording, right? Um, but that's not the case with M Recorder. You hit record and it's recording. So now I can just do this. And then when the tail is finished, I just hit record again to stop it. And now if we go over here into this SVS channel or SVS folder, which if I refresh the folder, you'll see it right here. We now have this sample. So now rather than even having to create a new channel or anything like that, I can just put it on the channel of the 
uh, you know, the sample that I wanna reverse into and just put it right before it like this. And now we just get something like this. I should probably turn that reverb off. So yeah, it's just a really fast way to do stuff like that. Um, obviously, if you want to like render a whole section, you can do that. You just, you know, highlight, uh, solo whatever you want, add a name. So let's say 222, two, two, uh, hit record and then just play it back. Uh, and then once again, we have the entire thing recorded up here that we can just chuck in. Uh, and this is also kind of cool because uh, then after each project, you just have a ton of recordings in a folder, which is kind of useful. I mean, I suppose you have that when you record anyway, it's just in the samples uh, processed and then, uh, oh, sorry, samples recorded folder. So kind of the same thing, but at least you get to name the files as you go this way with mRecorder. Uh, and then lastly, um, you might think, yeah, it's a pain in the ass though to have to like go in here all the time and, and hit record and stuff like that. Um, but as far as I can tell, you can actually just uh, MIDI map this uh, or maybe even key map it. So like let's key map it to, you know, tilde or uh, whoops, key map to tilde. And then I think that should work. Yeah, so that records now. So now I just have to come here and name it though. So Let's say like three, 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 and then be like, all right, I wanna you know, record this thing. So then hit tilde, play it, then hit tilde again. And then in theory, um, this should be up here, yep. Yeah, so that's just like a really quick way I found recently to resample things quickly and easily. And it's uh, helped out a lot with, you know, just creating sort of complex little resampled sections like this quickly. Uh, so I guess to finish the video, I'll just play this section that I'm working on. Thanks for watching.